Hey Paul. Hey Rich. What do you got here today? Well we have a couple of E-Drive ball screw actuators. Uh, on the left we have a 200 pound force rated actuator and on the right we have a 2,000 pound force rated actuator. Wow that sounds like a lot of force. It's a lot of force. How big do these things get? We go all the way up to 100,000 pounds of linear force. Wow 100,000 pounds that's, mm -hmm. that's putting a press on some things huh? It certainly is yep. What kind of applications do you typically see these in? So a lot of uh, applications are hydraulic replacement uh, where people are looking for more control um, a lot of times it could be pressing bearings into uh, surfaces, uh, a lot of high force where you need um, to hold up a lot of vertical mass, um, or pushing products like, say, cheese through a harp uh, is a very common use for uh, ball screw actuators. Okay. Yeah, I, I can imagine that you know, replacing hydraulics with this is a lot cleaner of a situation. Definitely. Uh, the electric actuator doesn't leak. Uh, which is important sometimes, especially when you're around uh, flames, open flames, a lot of uh, aluminum uh, manufacturer, they try to keep uh, um, hydraulic fluid away from that to prevent problems. Um, and then anywhere you need more control. So where a lot of times you may want to push a product slowly in the beginning and use your servo control, speed up through the process, and at the end, slow down again. So it gives you a lot of flexibility for control. Okay. So this is creating the force, obviously, through a mechanical means, right? We've got a, we've got a ball screw here, and that's how we're creating that, that force with the, with the motor driving that, that right. screw, so you're correct? You're getting a mechanical advantage with the screw. Uh, E-Drive, in particular, has a very large ball nut that they use um, and a larger diameter ball screw. Um, and so, yes, you get a lot of mechanical advantage from that. Okay. And then, you know, there's a couple solutions out there for when it comes to linear actuation. You, you, you've got this type of actuator with the ball screw, and then there's also linear servo motors, correct? Right. Where would you use one over the other? So, um, definitely, uh, linear servos are very dynamic, and but the big drawback to them is they don't have mechanical advantage. So, on one side, you can get some higher speeds and higher dynamic motion, but without the mechanical advantage, they, they, won't, they won't last in higher force, sustained force type applications. Gotcha, gotcha. So if we have to continue to press, this, yeah. is, a, this is a better yeah, if solution. You're going to hold up, even if you're going to hold up 500 pounds of mass for any length of time, a linear servo really isn't a good choice for that. Uh, where, a, where a ball screw now, you have the mechanical advantage, the servo motor's not working very hard to do that. Okay. Now these are obviously going into industry, can be some nasty environments. Yep. We've got food and beverage needs washed down. Uh, where do we stand with regards to the enclosure, environmental ratings, things like that? So the actuator itself is a sealed actuator. Uh, so uh, in certain instances where you have dust that you're worried about, we uh, will put a little uh, air pressure port and have positive air pressure inside the unit um, so that it doesn't ingest dust or other, other stuff that's in the air. Uh, but then also we, we do um, a, a number of layers of food grade possibilities. So we can do IP65, IP67, and then IP69K. And so you can have white epoxy coating. We can also do a nickel plating. And then we have full stainless steel actuators as well. Okay. Any kind of special applications that you think of is, as far as measurement, things like that? It seems like testing would be a good solution here. Testing, a lot of, a lot of high pressure, high force testing where they want the ac accurate feedback, we'll actually put a load cell inside the actuator uh, so that you get very, very accurate feedback. Rather than just looking at the torque on the servo, you're actually getting the actual pressure feedback in both a pressing or a, a retraction type pulling, you can you can get that type of load feedback. Right, because what you're getting back from the motor is really more of an electrical calculation, Right. whereas we could actually get load cell feedback and yeah. that load cells inside the enclosure so we can't damage it. Right, right? yeah, okay. and that's a big advantage. A lot of people will put load cells on other people's actuators outside in the environment. Very possible it can get damaged um, during normal operation. Putting it inside the actuator protects the load cell uh, and it helps us to give very, very accurate feedback on, on how much force you're using. Great, great. The other advantage um, E-Drive has is we do have a, a grease zerk on our ball nut, so we can re-grease the E-Drive actuator in the machine, where you might find a lot of roller screw actuators, they have to remove the actuator from the machine, ship it back to the manufacturer for re-greasing, so that's likely not going to happen very often. So it's a bit of a surgical that. procedure at right. that point. Yeah, this, you can send, the, using your servo, you could send your actuator to a specific re-greasing position, remove a port, and, and have access to that grease zerk. So okay. uh, extends the life by being able to keep it lubricated during the course of its life. Okay. And you've also used the terminology of roller screw versus ball screw. Could you elaborate yep. on that just a little bit? So, so a, a ball screw actually literally has ball bearings inside of the ball nut, 
and they are recirculating as they the, the nut runs up and down the screw. Okay. A, a roller screw is literally, it's, it has much more contact surface area, uh, which some people would say they think that's an advantage because you have more contact compared to the balls inside the ball nut, um, but it can be a disadvantage in terms of generating heat in the higher speed applications. So one of the things eDrive does also have a 65 inch per, se per second travel uh, actuator, we call it SS454. Um, you're not going to likely see that in a roller screw because of the heat generation. So that's one of the advantages of a ball screw over a roller screw is reduced friction, reduced heat in higher speed applications. Okay, great. Now I see you have an AMCI stepper motor connected to the smaller guy. Yep. I, you know, I come from the world of servos, so a stepper has enough torque to be able to run one of these. Absolutely. Again, because of the mechanical mechanical advantage. And then with the, with the belt drive, we can also do a two to one belt drive, cutting your torque requirement in half. And then it all depends on the application. We'll, we'll do servo when it makes sense, more dynamic applications, but if it's a simple, slower, maybe it's a presetting application or just indexing some, some slow motions, uh, then a stepper is absolutely perfect and a, a very cost effective solution. Right, so we're, we're decreasing the needs that we need on the electrical side of the system yep. and, and getting it out of the mechanical advantage. Absolutely. Wow. So when it comes to the actual motors, so you have an AMCI motor here, obviously PCC is a Siemens distributor, we sell Siemens servo motors. Yep. Uh, does it have to be a specific motor? Does it have to be a specific frame? How does that work? No, so we definitely have adapter plates for the motors of various sizes. And if you choose, we'll, we'll have you ship the motor like we have done in the past with you guys uh, to uh, Connecticut, where um, eDrive will mount your motor. They, they will drill and tap for anybody's motor, first of all, uh, but they'll mount it uh, and tension the belt for you and close up the actuator and make it a uh, a complete actuator to ship to the customer. Yeah, that's a great point. We, we did have an application recently where we were able to, to get the Siemens motor, ship it to you, and then get it back to the customer in a complete package. They didn't yeah. have to do any of the mechanical assembly. Uh, it was all epoxy painted and, and, and looked like a nice, clean solution for them, and it Absolutely. worked out really well. Uh, what's the lead time on, on, on a product like this? So on the, on the sm smaller items, you're in the two to three week range. As you get into the larger units, we can be five to six weeks. Okay, not, not bad. I mean, you typically talk about an engineered solution, oh, so yeah. yep. uh, that's, that's that's not, that's not bad. Hey Paul, what differentiates these uh, linear actuators from you know, other manufacturers in this space? Um, so I'm glad you asked. Uh, one, of, one of the benefits of E-Drive is that we have an in, internal anti-rotation. So rather than having, uh, when the screw rotates back and forth, the piston on the outside is not rotating. So some other roller screws you'll see in the industry, they, they will be rotating and have to have special end defectors to accommodate that, that rotation. All right, well thanks a lot Paul. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.